Hi, I'm Ngozi Elobike. I'm a lifelong learner, a global health practitioner, and a community organizer. I value team building, social entrepreneurship, community engagement, storytelling, and amplifying marginalized voices. In 2019, I graduated from Howard University with my bachelor's in science in biology. And then I went on to get my master's in global health and development from University College London. After training to become a community organizer through the Tola Organizing Academy, I decided to return back to the classroom. In September of 2021, I will be starting my master's in race, migration, and decolonial studies at University College Dublin. My purpose and path have been colored by my Nigerian background. When I was younger, my dad, who you see on screen now, next to my mom, always used to quiz me. He'd ask, what village are we from? What state are we from? What's the local governance? And although it was annoying, I knew it was his attempt to ingrain into me a strong sense of being and belonging. He wanted us, his kids born to the diaspora, to know that we were Nigerians. As a diasporan, we fear memory loss, an amnesia um, and a privileged positionality that distances us from a, our place of origin. Nigeria remains a stronghold in my life. Only through storytelling and lived experience am I able to keep it close, keep it vivid. Nigeria, like any country, is living and breathing. I'm careful as a diasporan not to paint in broad strokes and romanticize it. But more specifically, I am a proud Igbo Americana. This is best revealed in the minute moments of my life. The best example is me painstakingly reading Chinua Achebe's literature, carrying words to my parents, hoping for them to translate it, or learning Igbo through a virtual Zoom class, the language that my parents so easily speak. Lastly, it'd be watching my mom's reaction um, as she tastes my version of her igusi soup. The giant of Africa has given birth to some of the greats. I carry this tradition of greatness with me, hoping that not too much is lost in translation. I'd like to take you on a journey to this giant, Nigeria, accompanied by photos from global health partners taken on the ground in Borno State, Nigeria. Located in West Africa, the Republic of Nigeria is one of the most populous and culturally diverse countries in the entire world. Within the borders of Nigeria, there are over 206 million people coming from over 250 ethnic groups, speaking over 500 languages. Often referred to, to as the giant of Africa, Nigeria has the largest economy in Africa and the 24th largest economy in the world. This country is recognized as an emerging global power. Like so many countries around the world though, Nigeria is not immune to the struggle for global health equity, particularly for those most vulnerable and at risk. I witnessed what it is to navigate the health landscape in Nigeria back in 2004. The funny thing is, she rarely gets sick nowadays, but on our second trip to Nigeria, my sister Chenema ran a fever a week after we arrived. It was malaria. It refused to respond to over-the-counter medication and goosebumps decorated her shivering arms, although her temperature broke 105 degrees Fahrenheit. In angst, my mom carried her feverish body to the public hospital, but the long lines and swarm of people deterred her from being seen. Frantically, she asked around for a tropical disease physician. A private practice doctor um, was what she found after her prodding, um, located in Enugu State. The doctor immediately recognized my sister's higher vulnerability, 
um, and lower immunity due to a life outside of the tropical climate. They began treatment immediately. And within 12 hours, she had not only been discharged, but her fever had completely rebounded. But ultimately, my experience is a discussion of privilege, a privileged positionality, um, and what, how that can grant people access to healthcare. But all Nigerians, continentally and in the diaspora, deserve access to the best disease treatment and prevention. Agencies like the United Nations Foundation are working to end healthcare fragmentation and bridge accessibility gaps. Nigeria is home to the highest number of global malaria cases and deaths. In 2019, the country reported over 80 million cases 27% of the global malaria burden. Malaria tends to thrive in poor and rural settings with children, pregnant women, refugees, and internally displaced populations, IDPs, bearing the brunt of the injustice. Malaria is also a tremendous economic burden. Every year, Nigeria loses about 1.1 billion US dollars due to malaria-related absenteeism and loss of productivity. This data paints a grim picture, but there is also proof of progress. Global Fund and PMI have partnered with the Nigerian government to support proven malaria control methods like the distribution of bed nets and training of community health workers. This has driven down malaria from 42% in Nigeria's population to around 27% but progress has been compounded by many challenges, including a decade-long humanitarian crisis taking place in Borno State, Nigeria. Since 2010, armed conflict from groups like the Boko Haram have displaced more than three million people and caused the breakdown in delivery of essential healthcare services. Terrorist attacks targeted at the healthcare system resulted in the massive destruction of almost 43% of the healthcare infrastructure and departure of healthcare workers. Luckily, there are currently many people at the front lines fighting for health equity in Nigeria. I'd like you to meet some of them with a first-hand look of the voices on the front lines in Nigeria video by Nothing But Nets. Hawa yake yake Hawa yake yake Malaria is real and it's really destroying the lives of future leaders Yaro na ya sha wahala mun sha wahala kai Malaria ya kama shi yayi tsanani har jinin jiki babu mun je asibiti an yi test ba ruwan jiki wai ba jinin jiki if we can achieve free malaria society then we will have done what have done with about 70% of the disease burden in the state Malaria is a killer disease, but it's preventable if measures are taken. The total malaria burden has reduced significantly over the years as a result of proactiveness of the Ministry of Health. I want to say thanks to the GF and PMI for all their contributions so far. These contributions have taken us so far. I recall that in 2015, we had a prevalence level in the country, 27%. But by 2018, it has come down to 23%. Conflict is the main, main, main reason that has led to mass displacement of our population. Malaria is a 
suna harbi harbi na samu na kakkama yara na na fitar da kai na gurna we have uh, internally displaced persons camps almost all over the state with the insecurity and the endemicity of mal malaria here in Borno, Borno State, people are really suffering. We need some assistance. The malaria this year was so much. We have, from our data, we had about 1,110 women that had attenental. 480 were malaria positive. And I'm a Wahala, so say. What we learned, even at that time, was that some people are scared to even to come to the because some of them that have cough or something like that, or high fever, they are afraid that if they come to the hospital, they might be diagnosed as COVID patients. The state is doing a lot to ensure that these vulnerable people are being protected. We have the sectors, various sectors, about over 15 working sectors that are responding to their needs in the camp. Definitely a lot of effort is happening, working with partners that who are able to provide some measure of interventions in emergency situations. The goal of the national program is a malaria-free Nigeria. So where malaria is not there, you see these women will be stronger, they will be able to go to do their day-to-day -day activities, the children will be stronger, go to the school. Eliminating malaria, like I said, as a midwife, as a nurse, as a healthcare, I think that would be one of the best things that could happen in this society and in this community. <laughs> Global Malaria Partners have aligned to support the ambitious goals of the Nigerian government to end malaria in pursuit of a brighter future for all Nigerians. The Global Fund has partnered with Nigeria since 2002. Their focus is on procuring critical malaria prevention and treatment tools for the distribution in both public and private hospitals, as well as community clinics. In addition, the Global Fund supports training of healthcare workers and invest in social behavior change activities that promote proper use of malaria tools. PMI has been a proud partner in Nigeria since 2010, helping to decrease child death rates by 16% from 2008 to 2018 through investments totaling almost $635 million. They've done this through the procurement of malaria tools and collaboration with the National Malaria Elimination Program, also known as the NMEP. It is vital that we continue these programs in order to continue driving down the rates of malaria in Nigeria and around the world. And that's why you're here, to encourage your members of Congress to do just that and spread awareness throughout our communities. So thank you for joining me on this tour of Nigeria and at the Leadership Summit. Your efforts will have a lasting impact in the fight to end malaria. I'm gonna pass the mic now over to Margaret to introduce our next section.